Today, you know, an awful lot of people go and study computer science in college. And this, I think, is not really the right thing. Because what is, you know, the thing that we realize is, you know, computation and computational X is the big sort of paradigmatic thing of our time. And that's, you know, all these different fields, X for archaeology, zoology, whatever it is. There's a computational version of those fields that is going to be the future of those fields. And that's the thing people should want to study because they're going to, there's going to be low-hanging fruit to be picked, and it's really an exciting thing to do. But then people say, okay, I'm going to do, I, I really, they don't, I'm not sure they say it properly, but what they should be saying is I want to do computational X. What do I need to do to get to being able to do computational X? Well, they sort of say that implicitly, and then they say, well, I better study computer science in college, okay, which I think is crazy. Um, and I think because if you look at what is, I mean, computer science departments that have sort of a complicated story of what they actually teach, and, you know, a lot of it ends up being this is how to program in low-level languages, which I don't know whether anybody's going to care about in the future. Right. I mean, it's, you know, when I was, when I first learned about computers, when I first used a computer back in 1973, I programmed an assembly language. And when I built my first big computer system in 1979, it was built in the C programming language, which was at that time kind of a newfangled thing to, to use. And people were still saying, oh, anything really serious, you have to build in an assembly language. And, you know, turns out nobody says that anymore uh, because that, you know, we automated those layers. And so it isn't useful to, you know, hand program things in assembly language. And I think, you know, the thing that I've spent a large part of my life doing is trying to build sort of a higher level way of thinking about computation that doesn't require you to sort of be in the guts of the machine, you know, programming the loop and saying this thing should be stored in memory in this place and so on. That is not something humans need to do, just as humans don't need to write assembly language. Um, and, uh, you know, a large part of my life has been devoted to kind of building up this computational language that gets one away from that. And I think in terms of sort of the, the path of how do you get to computational X without going through sort of traditional computer science, this is a path that, you know, I've spent a lot of effort trying to enable. But how does that relate to kind of what people should study in college? Well, you know, if you study computer science, a large part of what you're studying is a bunch of the past. You're studying a bunch of, you know, how to m deal with computers at a low level. Actually, I think they stopped teaching assembly language, which is kind of a shame. But it's kind of a sign because it's kind of like, well, there are these layers and, uh, you know, that more and more gets automated, less and less is worth learning that way. So people, you know, now in terms of uh, computer science as a field that colleges teach has various kinds of sort of application areas that have been bolted on to computer science as such different ones in different schools, because they don't fit in any other department. Um, and uh, that's sort of random. And if one of the, you know, robotics is one that's often bolted on, computer security, cryptography, another bolt on, machine learning is a sort of bolt on, because it's like, what other department does it fit in? Even though the methods are much more like physics and, and things like that, um, it's all statistics. Um, so, you know, it's complicated. So. Gosh, what this is a this is a, a complicated answer, isn't it? I, I, I 